insight into what this channel is all about because I, I think from gauging some of the different comments that people might not really understand what this channel is about. This channel is about bridging the gap that's in the African diaspora that has been created over the past 500 years as a result of imperialism and colonization. Uh, and be because of that, you had numerous uh, slave trades, you had Trans-Saharan, you had uh, East African, and of course you had the West African European slave trade, which what it did, uh, which affects many people who are in the Western world because many of us descend from those who were taken from different parts of Africa and brought over to the Americas, Brazil, South America, Colombia, Venezuela, uh, what we now know as Guyana, Suriname, all through up the, uh, the, the Caribbean islands, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Cuba, Bahamas, Bermuda out in the Atlantic, and then uh, many people ended up in Canada as well as the United States. And by no means do I think that these people were the first people to arrive from the continent of Africa in what we know as the Americas. I firmly believe that there were people who were navigating ships and who were able to do a tremendous amount of things during that time uh, just because of the ingenuity. And we see it in ancient Egypt. You see it all throughout different parts of Africa, in Zimbabwe. Uh, you see it in, in different parts of Central Africa, and West Africa. You'll also see it in South America, and you'll even see it in different parts of America. So there's, I, I don't wonder whether or not there were people who came from the continent of Africa that arrived before Columbus. That, that's not the question. Um, but what I recognize today, which is a problem, is that the reason why there is a gap is because of misinformation. So I go back over the course of my life and I remember the stories that I was told as a child by in South Carolina by relatives who would say, hey, you know what, I'm not African, I'm not, the, you know, I'm not this, that, or the other. And then they would come up with all these different narratives about people from Africa, which would be incorrect. Some of the information might be accurate, but by and large, because these people have never traveled outside of their little road or their little city or whatever, they had now picked up a narrative about people from Africa that was inaccurate. And then you would hear the same thing, you know, as, as time went on, you would hear the same thing that some people in Africa would feel about people from America, black Americans. So as of late, as I've been addressing this topic, I've received a lot of comments in the, in the feed saying, well, you know, don't waste your time talking about that. You're only fueling, you know, the, the misinformation by talking about it. And I stopped and I thought to myself, I said, now, how, how does that even make any sense? Well, you're fueling misinformation by talking about it, but so many people feel this way. And I'll give you a good example. When I first started talking about the whole thing where there's this movement of people who are largely of African descent in America who are hell bent on saying that they are not African, they are indigenous, and they, are, they don't come from Africa. Now. I had people say, well, why are you wasting energy on that? Because it's a small amount of people who feel that way. When I first heard it, I subscribed to that too. I kind of thought to myself, I said, well, this is a small group of people. It's not a large group. But then I started looking at how many views these videos would get in the comments. And I said, wait a minute, these are in the millions. These are not, this is not like a couple thousand views. These are in the millions. I said, hmm. I said, there's more to it. So I started doing a little bit more investigation. I said, this is a large movement. And then as my channel began to grow and more and more people began to comment, you started getting that type of chatter in the comments saying, well, you know, we aren't African, you know, we really were already here. And, and so I was like, okay, I don't dispute that there were people who were already here, but their claim is that they're of no African descent and that everybody who's here does not, nobody comes from Africa and all the DNA tests are fraudulent, no matter how accurate they are and how they link you to your family, but all of this stuff is bogus, but we should listen to them and that we should also trust the U.S. Supreme Court, we should put, trust the U.S. National Archives and we should trust all of this United States stuff uh, who started this, a lot of this foolishness, but we should trust their records and uh, we should dismiss this other stuff because it's bogus, because it's for-profit companies and all this other kind of stuff. When in actuality, many of these people who are peddling these theories, they're for-profit as well. So you just kind of start it. So I said, wait a minute, there's more to this. And my thing is not to try to convince people who are brainwashed by it. My thing is to 
at least have a counter argument for those people who do not know and they're going to be presented with it. And so when uh, so then another, another thing that will happen is people say, well, no, you know, you can't really you just got to dismiss it. It's not a big deal. And those are the same people who woke up in November 2016 to Donald Trump as president and were stunned because they dismissed foolishness and they underestimated it. And so what I'm realizing just throughout being on this earth, as many years I've been on this earth, is that if you begin to dismiss certain things, it will come back and bite you in your tail. Uh, and so what I don't want to do is be the person who knew better and didn't say anything about it because, oh, I don't want to give them any, any credibility or anything like that. I've lived too long and seen too much foolishness get traction because people got caught flat-footed looking the other way and dismissing it. And also another reason why that happens is a lot of times because people think within their own nuclear life, well, they know it, so they figure everybody else should know it. If you live long enough and you've been around enough people, you know there are a lot of people who don't know a lot of things. There are seven, eight billion people on this earth, and a lot of people don't have the same information or the same access to the same information that other people have. Or, they, or maybe it's not prioritized. Maybe they have the access to the information, but they don't prioritize it. So those things are things that I have you know, discovered over the years. And as a result of that, it has, uh, you know, it's created an interesting dynamic. And, uh, and so for me, what I have done is I have developed the ability to objectively think. I remember as a child growing up, my grandfather would say, you know, Jay, the Democratic Party likes the black people. So we're going to vote for Jimmy Carter. And, you know, really, and I was indoctrinated with, you know, it's in, in, throughout life. Uh, you got to pick a side. You got to pick a side. You got to pick a side as far as religion is concerned. You got to pick a side as far as politics is concerned. You got to pick a side as far as culture is concerned. You got to pick a side. You got to pick a side. So what that does is that means that if you just stop for a second and think to yourself objectively, so, you know, I agree with this, but I don't agree with that. I agree with this, but I don't agree with that. If you are that person, normally what ends up happening, those who've been indoctrinated on one side or the other, have a problem with that and they try to bully you into one side or the other. And if you're not strong enough to say, step back, I got a brain and I can think for myself and I don't give a rat's tail what you say, you're not gonna bully me into your line of thinking, no matter how strong and insulting you try to come, I don't care. A lot of people are not willing to do that, but they feel it. They feel it inside, they feel in their core that no, I don't agree with blanketing an entire group of people based on the actions of some. Even if it's 50%, even if it's a majority, I can't blanket everybody. So if I can't think objectively for a moment and say, well, wait a minute, yes, it's the majority of people who might behave like that, or perhaps the majority of people I've encountered, maybe it's not even a majority of people, maybe it's just a majority of people I've encountered feel this way, then I, then, okay, I can, I can deal with that. So, so what I've learned to do, because I remember hearing all these different things, this gap between African and African diaspora, misinformation on both sides about each other, monolithic thinking about Africa as though it's one big landmass with the same people who knew, knew the same things, understood the same things, were taught in the same school systems, been around the same people, eat the same food, speak the same language. That's ignorant if that's what you believe about the continent of Africa. And that's how I thought for many years of my life until I went over there and discovered something completely different. Completely different. But yet, the most vocal people, you don't hear white people in America talking about, nah, I don't go to Africa because them Africans don't like you. And you know, they don't even, they, they, that's, they, they've already laid the framework and groundwork through media and that bogus education system and all of that. And now the people who chatter this stuff are people who look just like me, who will become strong vocally and say, nah, you don't need to be doing that. You need to make sure that you're doing what you're doing here in America. And, I, and so I had to check one dude. I was like, look, man, I spent 25 years of my life in America. I said, you can check the receipts on the stuff that I have done and still do and all the people that I've mentored and all the people that I've helped over the years and the tens of thousands of uh, educational resources that I've given away for free, all the different things over the years. So, you know, you can't come at me with that. You know, it'd be one thing if I was a jack leg sitting on the side of the road, you know, just talking from, uh, from from a from an arm, you know, from behind a keyboard or whatever. But the reality is, is that all of those years that I spent in my community, building up my community, 
and trying to figure out why the same things would keep occurring over and over and very little would change is what led me to go dig deeper, which led me to the continent of Africa. And so when I went to the continent of Africa and I began to see the similarities, not the differences, but the similarities, I said, wait a minute, there's something here. There's more to this story. And so I kept digging beneath the surface. And as I began to dig beneath the surface, I realized the sinister plan on both sides and I use the word sinister because it was, it's the same players on both sides that effectively formed a wedge, a gap of misinformation that keep people fighting to this day. And so the whole goal is to keep, keep people fighting against, to, to, against each other, towards each other, while the real problem continues to thrive and do whatever it is it wants to do and profit off of the same, the same system that was put in place in America more than 400 years ago, but globally more than 500 years ago. And, and so what, what is sad to see is how, like so now, you know, what I did a talk about the whole thing about how uh, there was a, vi a video that came out about how some parents uh, t tell their children when coming to America from places like Nigeria to stay away from those African-Americans. And so it's like, but the, but the good part about the comments is some people say, yes, you know, that I did get that talk. But other people say, well, no, we didn't do that in Cote d'Ivoire. We didn't do that in this particular country. Some people in Nigeria are like, well, no, that didn't. We didn't have that conversation. And then, other, again, some other people confirmed it. But the sad part was when you had some people who were in America saying, see, all those Nigerians don't like us. All those Africans don't like us. They're coming here to steal our stuff. All of them. And I was like, well, wait a minute. You don't know all of them. See, this is where the objective side comes in. You don't know all of them. So how can you say all of them with such full-throated passion as if it's the truth? And so someone who lacks the ability to objectively think, you don't even have to be a critical thinker, just an objective thinker to say, well, you, you all can't be on that page. While some might be, yes, some might be on that page, but all might not be. Flip side over to, uh, over to Africa. So I've been in Africa and, you know, there are different comments that come across. Y'all arrogant African-Americans, y'all privileged African-Americans, y'all coming over here thinking y'all this, that, and the other and trying to tell us all this, that, and the other, this, that, and the third, so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And so guess what? Some African-Americans do go to the continent of Africa believing with their colonized white colonized minds believing that they're going over there and improving and helping the poor Africans because the Africans don't know anything and they need us to come over there and make lives, life better for them. Yes, some do, but all don't. Every African-American or black American or whatever you want to call a replanted indigenous, whatever kind of American you want to call it, don't even call them American, just the person who has DNA that comes from that continent, that land mass that was named by the white man Africa. And so all of this, whatever however you want to identify, those who were displaced from that land mass who have genetic material, their DNA comes from there, are coming back. All of us don't see it that way. All of us are not coming back trying to change the continent and make it like us. So... When you hear it on both sides, you say something is wrong here. Something is wrong. There is a problem when people can't sit down and say, all right, let, let me understand your story. Okay, and listen and keep their big mouth shut because sometimes people, as soon as the person starts talking, they want to, they, they block out what the person's trying to say and then they're automatically ready to respond. And then when they respond, they're just responding from their feelings and they're not responding from logic. They're not responding from actually sitting down and caring and want to understand and learn from what the person is saying. So now that creates friction and tension within the conversation and nobody hears one another. And then again, at the same time, the same people who've been profiting over the past 500 years continue to profit because you have cultural wars happening that they, that they have just basically exploited exploited the culture wars, people caught up in their emotions and their feelings, and they keep making the billions of dollars and everybody else is still fighting for the crumbs. And so when we talk about this particular channel, all we're doing is creating an opportunity for people to understand the brilliance on both sides while addressing the elephants in the room that people don't wanna talk about. So when I spotlight the businesses in different parts of Africa, it's showing those who might not dare or who, who may have been thinking one way now they're able to say, wait a minute, 
hold on, maybe somebody has been toying with my mind. This has nothing to do with trying to care about what other people think about you or whatever. It's education. It's changing narratives. So when the person sees the brilliance that's going on in Ghana or the brilliance that's going on in Tanzania or the brilliance that's happening in South Africa or the brilliance that's happening in, in Sierra Leone, they stop and they say, wait a minute, I, you, I thought that all they had was wars and corruption and all this other kind of stuff going on. And, and then the person who's in Africa who they, has an opportunity to see the spotlight of the brilliance of what's going on with so many African Americans who are not strung out on drugs, not in jail, not gangbangers, and all these other kind of narratives that they see on TV, then they say, wait a minute, that person's doing what? Making how much doing what? Wait a minute, we have certain things in common. And so B, we have these different things in common. Hmm, wait a minute, maybe I need to start adjusting my mindset because we're not as different as what I was thinking. And so that's what you see me doing. That's why I'm excited to share with you Charlie Sox and what they're doing in Ghana and uh, Anaya and what, what they're doing in Kua and all the different places and Oma and, all, and, and what's happening in Ghana. But then you get a chance to meet Nasima and Dr. Michelle and all the different businesses that we'll be featuring that are in America as well. That's how you bridge the gap. That's what a mature person does. An immature person sits there and stokes differences and divisions and tries to ignore the objectivity. This is not saying don't address the fact that people are coming in trying to use and ride on the backs of those of our ancestors in America who have laid, paved the foundation for many of us uh, to be able to take advantage of. Nobody's saying that you don't speak about that, but you address that particular group of people and don't lump everybody into it. Yeah, them Nigerians and Ethiopians and Somalians, they're coming over. Well, it's not all of them. And so that's the thing. And so that's what I realized. And my experience has taught me that. Me traveling and being in these different cultures has taught me that. But also the ways of the world have taught me that because it's no different. If you, you come to certain African-American communities and they'll do the same thing to you. And you go to certain communities, you go in Africa and you see the different culture, ethnic uh, conflicts that are taking place. Within one country, you have four or five different ethnic groups fighting one another the same way we do in different parts of America. You have gangs in America. It's no different than a tribe in Africa. And so what, who exploits both sides of that? So until we begin to have an honest conversation, an honestly objective conversation, then we're disingenuous. And I guarantee you, as long as we continue with the approach of trying to lump everybody together as, on either side, as one big bad group of people, then we'll be saying, singing the same sad tune 10, 12, 20, 100 years into the future. But until we, under, and once we can get past that and sit down and say, okay, how can we bridge this gap? And this is what I say to people, I'm bridging the gap. I'm able to forge very positive relationships on the continent of Africa, uh, business relationships, entrepreneurial ventures, uh, employee relationships, on the continent of Africa with none of that drama. So nobody can gaslight me. And I say gaslight me and try to, try to say what I'm saying is not true because the proof is in the pudding. All you gotta do is look at the videos and see all the people that are coming over and the wonderful time that they're having. That's because of the people on the ground in Africa working with someone from the American African diaspora. That's not me sitting up in a hole somewhere mad and doing nothing about it. It's me saying, being angry about the mind game that's been played on us and doing something about it. That's what you see happening. And so somebody sitting in a corner, sitting somewhere, not doing anything, haven't traveled anywhere, haven't spent the time to really care and get among the people in the cultures on either side. And I'm saying on either side because you have people sitting over in the hole in Africa somewhere, pick a country that's talking trash about those in America and never even spent the time to get to know anybody and find out the similarities. Just like you have people sitting in a hole somewhere in America talking trash about people in different parts of Africa and have never even taken the time to get to know anyone. All they're doing is listening to some little dude who's sitting up there, he's spitting out his stuff because he's upset and then you allow somebody to trigger that in you, now you're triggered and, without, and once you get triggered, you lose the ability to objectively think and stop for a second and say, wait, man, you could be playing games too. You can go, what's up here? You could be playing some games. Hmm. You take, so what I've learned to do is to take it case by case. And as I take it case by case, the wonderful thing that happens is that I'm able to form a completely different opinion. And it doesn't matter what anybody has to say because I've spent the time, the money, the, the energy, because I care to do it. I spent over 40 years listening to the peanut gallery. I have some relatives that are so ignorant in their thought process, and I listen to that. 
I believe that. Just because they look like me, that's why I know better than to just believe people just because they look like me. Because the one that you use to fool the people is the one, the one that looks like you. So I have to stop and say to myself, okay, let me take it for what someone says. Let me take it for what they do. Not, just be, not take it just because of how they look. And that's how we get suckered every single time because we don't stop long enough and say, you know what? Let me process it a little differently. So to the point about the whole Democratic Party and with my grandfather, and he said, yeah, the Democrats got you back. And I believe that all the way up until 1990. Uh, two or so, and and I'm believing, I'm waiting. I couldn't do the Reagan and all of them. And yeah, no doubt, the, the, the Republicans had no love, no love at all, not one bit of love. But the Democrats didn't have any more love. It's like they said, well, pick a side. So I was just kind of pick a side. Two sides are wrong. So <laughs> either way, let me pick a side. And so when you understand the history of both of those political parties. I'm not even going back to the Dixiecrats and the old Republicans and how blacks used to be Republicans and all of that. I'm just talking about modern history and the different things and the different alliances that use blackface but have white agendas behind it. And so people are afraid to talk about that because they figure, well, you know, okay, they're doing something. They're giving free lunch and, and free this and free that and free food. And, and I learned throughout the years, I said, well, if something is free, it's nothing's free. You know, there's always going to be a cost attached to it. If they're going to give you a stimulus, you're going to have to pay it back some kind of way. If they're going to forgive a debt, you're going to have to pay it back some kind of way. So that's the way this system works. And so as I understood more and more, and I was able to objectively think, then that's when I was able to say, well, let me, I can be an independent with this. I don't have to like forego my ability to vote or whatever, but I don't have to just get lockstep. And then you know something is wrong when people become fanatical about you expressing your opinion. When they become fanatical, oh no, you know, you better get back, you're a dick, you're a coon, you're a set out, you're the and the other, and they go, they go down that road and, he, and they don't even realize what they're saying because they're getting, you know, their pieces of information from, from people who have a professional propagandaist. I don't know if that's a legitimate term or not, but <laughs> I just made it up. So they're professional at peddling and stoking in emo emotions and they understand psychology. They understand that if you hit someone's offense, they, are, they understand uh, the, old, uh, the old scripture that talks about how an offended man is more unyielding than a fortified city. And that's what you begin to find. Once people get offended, they don't want to listen. They don't want to hear anything outside of that. So they want to stay mad. And so that's what a lot of people do when they comment. They just want to stay mad. They want to stay stuck on stupid and they want to stay mad. And so when that happens is they don't realize that they are sabotaging their own agenda. They're sabotaging the very thing that they say that they, the problem they want to solve because they are so stuck on fighting for and holding on to their offense instead of saying, okay, let me channel this energy. I can be offended, but let me channel this into a solution. Let me channel this into fixing something and, and being very aggressive with it. Let me, because he's that, I'm just as offended. I'm just offended by things that I see on both sides. And so what do I do? I choose to use this platform to educate. Yeah, we have entertaining things, and but everything, the core of it is gonna be education. And while some people opt not, they don't, you know, prefer not to have their platforms to be as controversial or talk about these type of topics because, and, and, and oftentimes, you know, just depending on whatever the agenda is, everybody has their platform to do what it is they want to do. I just recognize that I can use this platform on multiple levels. I can entertain you. I can educate you. I can inspire you. I can lead you to the continent. And for those, uh, and for those who are on the continent, I can take them different places within the continent of Africa. For those who want to come to America, if they want to do that, then they can meet me in different parts of America. Those who are in America who want to go on our domestic American tours, they can do that. But that's what this whole channel is all about. So for those who are saying, hey, man, don't talk about this and don't talk about that, our mission is to bridge the gap in the African diaspora. And the way that you do that is breaking down misinformation. And there's no way that I can go and, and, and be true to myself if I'm just sitting there watching things and don't say certain things and just kind of, well, I don't know if I need to say that because, you know, them people crazy and they tripping, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they might not know what they're talking about, but they've been doing it uh, pretty well for an extended period of time. So anyway, I, uh, I will say this, you know, for everyone watching, make sure that you uh, hit that subscribe button more on the way. And uh, now, you know, the mission vision of the maximum impact travel experiences, maximum impact, success, all different things we have coming on the way. That's what we do here at Maximum Impact. So until next time, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Much more cometh your way. But guess what? Remain objective and you won't have the chains of the lack of objectivity around your neck and you'll be able to see things just a little bit more clearly perhaps. All right. Talk to you soon. Take care. Be safe. 
Open up your eyes and see All the fun and mystery Take an hour 